What is this foreign place? Because the lineups are so ridiculously long at the Timmy's across town now, I've gotten so frustrated, especially the Timmy's at the corner of, uh, what is it, at the corner of uh, uh, Giesbrecht and uh, the 52. Because the lineups are so ridiculously long at the Timmy's across town, I found myself at the Starbucks. It's bad. So the GoPro is once again crashing on us today. I have no idea what's going on with it. It's a Hero 7. Maybe it's just getting old, but I'm going to be looking into getting a Hero 8 uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, the Hero 9 is available already. I'll see if I can find it at a good price somewhere, but I don't, I don't need the fanciest of the fancy. I just need another camera that works so I can talk to you guys. Using my phone like this is kind of inconvenient. It doesn't show as much. and. You know, when I mount you guys on my dashboard like this, it, it doesn't give a... Uh, it's just not the best. But anyway, the story for this morning is that there's a Tim Hortons on the other side of Steinbeck. Oh, this guy's in a hurry. Calm down, buddy. You love your job that much? Shakes, he's in a rush to get to work. The Timmy's on the other side of town, like I showed you the other day, is all like boxed in by construction, right? So a lot of people uh, are too lazy to just go around to get to there. So they go to the next Timmy's. This is pretty much what I do too, right? And uh, since everybody's going to that Timmy's, the drive through lineup at that Timmy's at the corner of Giesbrecht and the 52, the lineup is onto the street in all directions, blocking traffic. And people just line up and just block the whole road, impeding traffic. And where are the cops to, you know, clear the road? I don't know. You never see them in Steinbeck. We don't know where they are. So anyway, they, they're they blocking traffic, so that's getting frustrating. And I got so frustrated that I went to Starbucks. You know, I'm glad I did. The people that work at the drive-thru or at the Starbucks in general in Steinbeck are the most friendly people in town. They must have headhunted them. Just the most friendly people you can find in town. They make you laugh every time you go through there. And uh, they make you happy. Like, they should. You know, it, it, it's morning time. Everybody's kind of in a bad mood. No one wants to go to work except for that one guy up there going 200 miles an hour. He wants to go to work really bad. But uh, Starbucks, the the servers there, they, they make the morning a little bit better, right? So maybe they've, uh, they may have just earned me uh, as a customer, as a daily customer. I don't know. I got a large, uh, I don't even know what, how they speak. They have a different language at Starbucks. They don't exactly speak English with their menu. I think a large is what, a venti or a grandi? We're just going to call it a large coffee because I'm a normal person and I'm not as fancy as all these other people going there. But hey, they may have gotten a, a new customer because... Uh, their friendly attitude. So a friendly attitude goes a long way. That's the moral of the story this morning. So we're going to use my phone today to vlog and for the foreseeable future because my GoPro is shot on the inside. It's it's not doing well. So we'll see what we can make of it. Notice anything different? I lost a horn. I didn't really lose it. I uh had to get it removed. <laughs> the brackets broke off this morning. So now I'm one horn down. They're gonna fix it for me uh, this evening, later tonight, or over the weekend. And I'm not too worried about it. The one horn still works. It just goes along with the rest of the truck. It fits right in. <laughs> so we're on our way to Kenora. As soon as I pick up my trailer, I have to go and pick up another trailer like we brought to Dauphin. Except instead of going to Dauphin this time, we're gonna go to Kenora with it. I gotta pick it up there in about an hour. And it takes, what did I say last time, two and a half hours to get to Kenora, two and a half hours back. I'm just dropping the trailer off there, and I think I might be bringing an empty back. Same same kind of deal that we did with Dolphin the other day. It's pretty simple. Should be fun. It's a van trailer. Don't got to tie anything down. Just literally hook up onto it, bring it over there. Job complete. So we'll get some extra, extra scenery today anyways. Get off the prairies for a little bit. Just coming up into Ontario. Man, is there traffic out here, though. Oh, these cottage people, I tell you what. 
there's like a mile long lineup behind me. They had a chance to pass. They chose not to. Now they're stuck behind me on the two lane. Should have, should have, you know, thought of their, their life choices before they got to this point. So I'm limited at 100, 100 kilometers an hour and the speed limit is 90 here and everybody behind me wants to do 150. And you know, I'm, I'm thinking, it's, I'm looking at the time, it's like 2, 2.30 in the afternoon or something. Why is there so many people going to their cabin on Friday? I know it's a long weekend, right? Okay, so I'm filming this on August long weekend on Friday. So Monday is our long weekend, right? How do so many people also get Friday off? Like I know I'm talking about it right now, it doesn't really do it any justice because all the cars are behind me. It doesn't look like there's anybody on the road, but just trust me. Hundreds and hundreds of cars out here on the road. Everybody got Friday off too? And they get Monday off? Do they get Tuesday off too? Do they even work? How do you, why do you get an extra long weekend to go to the cabin? Huh? Like so many people. It must be all the owners and CEOs. <laughs> they can make their own hours. Good for them, good for them. But anyways, we gotta go to Kenora yet here. We got uh, maybe another half hour in front of us here. Just switch trailers, go back to Winnipeg, drop it off there. Hour long weekend will start then. We're not going to the cabin or anything. We don't got any cabin to go to, but uh, I am planning on going to cruise night on Sunday. Because uh, Britt's working Saturday and Sunday. Monday we both have off and we're planning on going on a fancy date. You can't see it, but I'm doing the eyebrow thing right now. We're, we're having a fancy date on Monday. I'm excited. We don't go on many dates because we work so much and we're so busy. And I didn't schedule any holidays this summer either because we're trying to pay off some debt. So next summer, we'll uh, stop to pause and take more time to enjoy ourselves. That's for sure. At least it's a beautiful day out here. It's going to be a really nice weekend too. For us anyways, not for the farmers. But for us, it'll be a nice weekend. But truly, I am shocked. I'm shocked with how many people have the Friday off. Don't you have to work the day before and the day after a stat holiday to get paid for the stat holiday? I'm pretty sure that's how it works, right? That way people don't take, like... You know, take sick days and extend a long weekend. You have to work, like, look, Monday is the holiday, so you have to work the Friday and the Tuesday in order to get paid for the Monday. I was pretty sure that's how it worked, but there's a lot of people out here that uh, get an extra day. Lucky them. Looks like freshly blasted rock here, right? Eh? I wonder if they widened it. Must have. There's new asphalt here, and that definitely looks like it was blasted out of there recently. I'd love to be here and see it when they blast it. I always say that. And I think of that every time I go past roads like that. Because where I live, there's nothing like that. There's nothing like this. But two hours from where I live, less than two hours, you get into this Canadian Shield, which is this rocky, hilly part of the country that stretches from here down to southern Ontario. This is the terrain that separates Eastern Canada from Western Canada. That's why we're so, you know, separated. <laughs> because it's very hard and expensive to build on this terrain. So the majority of Canadians live out east of this. And if you want to get through this terrain, it's going to take you about two days of driving. Then you reach Eastern Canada. Western Canada starts where the flatlands begin, where the prairies begin. Not exactly, but you get my point, right? So the populations of Canada are very, very split, very far apart. I used to come through here all the time. I kind of miss it. But it is what it is. This camera's a little shaky, isn't it? The mount I have for this thing isn't as good as the GoPro, but it's all we got right now, and the, the engine's working hard pulling me up this hill. See, it's smoother as soon as I let off the throttle. I'm gonna have to get used to using a new camera for about two to three weeks until I get my, uh, my new one. trailers and we're still seeing
seeing all of this traffic coming from Manitoba into Ontario. It's not quite as busy now, but it's still a steady stream of cottage goers. Here's another bunch of them. Everybody going to the lake. It's probably going to get even busier. As the time is now, what, like 4 o'clock? No, nah, 3.30? 4 o'clock, somewhere in there. So everybody is getting off work now in Winnipeg. And in about two hours, they're all going to be pouring past here. <laughs> it's sort of like how Wisconsin looks uh, with all the Chicago and Illinois traffic coming in every long weekend, you know? It reminds me a lot of a smaller version of uh, Interstate 94 on a Friday or a long weekend. All those Illinois plates. Man, I'll never forget that traffic. Everybody from Illinois going to Wisconsin to try to get away from Illinois. <laughs> Same thing here. All of these Manitoba plates. Trying to get away from Manitoba. I don't blame them. Have fun, guys. Hope you catch a lot of fish. I apologize for that footage with the phone. Note to self, the phone is not good for vlogging. Noted. Don't worry, there's only one more day before I get my new camera. I'm filming this end of day on that camera right now. I got the Hero 8. I guess I just might have... Well, I told you about it already. You guys know about it already. Uh, so I got one more vlog. Tomorrow's vlog, uh, or the next vlog, goes on the Hero 7. And that camera was having issues, as you know. That's why all the footage this week has been dodgy and all over the place. And... <laughs> When I make daily vlogs, I sort of just gotta use what I got. And uh, if the equipment agrees with me, great. If it doesn't agree with me, I gotta use what I got. I, I try to keep a daily story going the best that I can. You know, Monday to Friday, the best that I can. And on the weekends too. Uh, I've been thinking about moving to just a Monday to Friday schedule. And then, you know, weekends are just bonus. If I film something on the weekend, great. If not, I'm just gonna spend it with my family and spend it with... Uh, uh, my friends spend it just relaxing or just catching up. You know, it's nice to have a couple of days to catch up. So uh, we'll see. Uh, I'm hesitant to commit to any schedules uh, because I try to make this. Is, I try to make it a daily vlog because it's supposed to be a daily record of my life. That it's like a diary for myself, something that I can go back on decades in the future and I can see myself uh, and uh, see if I've gotten better or worse. And I like to share it as well as I go along. You know, life's exciting. And I really love what I do. And most of my time is spent uh, driving trucks. And that uh, that is my biggest passion in life. It's what I do. It's all I really know. Uh, so I, I named this channel Trucker Josh Vlogs like 10 years ago. It would have been nice to have something more universal to include everything in my entire life. But eh, it is what it is now and we're going to run with it. You guys already know what this channel is all about. You've been here for quite a while already. And most of you, a lot of you, and some of you are new. If you're new, welcome. There's a lot to catch up on. I don't blame you if you don't want to go all the way back through all 2,338 videos. <laughs> but if you want to, they're there for you. And you can join now and follow us from here. Oh man, I've, I've been through so much already in the last 10 years. We started off in that mobile home, uh, sold that, bought our, our house, that house with the black roof. Uh, that's where I met Britt and we got married. Well, no, I met her and then we got engaged and then we sold that house, bought that big country house, that big, like 17 and a half acre property. I loved that property. I was so sad to see it go, but we had to sell that as well. We'd been there for a few years as well. We got married, we were in that house. And we sold that and uh, moved to this small house now because we have new plans for the future. We own some land out of town. Uh, we're going to build a house there in the future. And uh, this reminds me, I haven't been to the land in like a month. Oh, it's going to be pretty overgrown already. But, you know, until we can actually uh, uh, start putting shovels in the ground and building, there's not much we can do out there right now. So we're just... Just sitting on it and waiting to build our, our dream house. And our dream house isn't like what you would think a big dream house. It's a very, we want to have a very small, modest house. Something that's affordable, that we can retire in. And you got to remember, after you retire, you still got to pay for your property tax. You got to pay for your, your electric bills, your internet and phones and everything else. So we want to have a house that's not going to, like, 
make a struggle in retirement, like just trying to pay the electricity. These big houses, you see these people who win the lottery, they build these big massive houses, you buy these Lamborghinis, and then they run out of money and they have to sell everything because they can't afford the insurance, they can't afford the maintenance. You know, you buy a Lamborghini, we haul cars uh, at work and we, we haul a couple of Lamborghinis and beautiful cars, you know, like worth hundreds of thousands of dollars beautiful cars but when you own it you have to be able to maintain them because those cars now you lamborghini owners out there can correct me but from what i've heard from the own from owners and people who have these cars is to maintain them and get an oil change done is very expensive it can be up to like over ten fifteen thousand dollars just to get those cars serviced because that you can't service them just anywhere they have to have lamborghini service there's no Lamborghini dealership in Manitoba. You got to ship them off to Calgary. That's the closest place or drive them out there just to get it serviced there. I can't imagine how expensive the oil would be plus the the shop rate at a Lamborghini dealership. I could, probably like 1500 bucks an hour. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's like 10 to $15,000 just for an oil change and a service on those cars. So a lot of people, they buy these cars uh, and they can't maintain them. So my point is we want to build a house that we can retire in and be comfortable in and afford so it won't be anything too fancy but it'll be everything that we want in a house and it'll be focused around our dogs obviously if we have any kids in the future so like a three bedroom we'll probably build like a, a three bedroom with the possibility of adding on in the future like we'll build the house in such a way that if we suddenly have a bunch of kids that we have space and a plan to add on to the house that's that's what i'm thinking but yeah, and anyways, we're in this house now because it's cost effective. It's 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 a very small house, cheap to maintain, and uh, we're we're trying to pay off some debts. And then once our debts all paid off, uh, we want to we want to start our plans for building. But anyways, all of this progress is all on the vlog channel here. That's what I'm getting at, and you can follow it. You can follow our progress. You can go back and see my whole life as it's as I've gone through all kinds of different circumstances and met different people gone to different places uh traveled all over Canada and the United States life's exciting and uh, if you don't uh take time to enjoy it, it it flies past and I know I'm still young I'm still young I'm 33 uh but you know if I'm not careful you know I'll blink and suddenly I'll be 68 and or 70 and if i don't plan for that day now i'll be unprepared i like i want to be prepared so that when i get to that point that i can just enjoy the rest of my life stress-free and you know maybe we'll have a condo or something down south on the gulf or something we'll see a lot of planning so i'm glad you're here with me anyways i've been gibber yabbering here for quite a while Sorry again for that footage today. I did my best. I really did. My equipment just wasn't up to par, I guess. I'll see you tomorrow. And I hope you guys, if you're new, subscribe. Not every day is exciting. I'm going to be honest with you. I film every day for the most part. I miss some days here and there. Uh, I need a break every now and then. But uh, you're all welcome here. Welcome to subscribe. Hit that like button if you do like the video. Stick around and... You know, there's some days that are super exciting and there's some days that are that are uh, more boring than anything. But, you know, all of those combined create life. Not every day can be exciting because then it wouldn't be special. I'll see you tomorrow.